This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesis in 101, where you wanted to be a grown-up and now look at you. In the previous tutorial, we spoke about coding, which is practically just labeling text. And today we're going to be focusing on how to turn those codes into themes. The aim of the game here is to find patterns in a data set. And on a personal note, this is my second favorite part of thematic analysis. I mean, you actually get to use a couple of brain cells here. This phase is the commencement of interpretive analysis, which is the beginning phases of developing arguments about the phenomenon being studied. If you are not familiar with how to create arguments, please check out my tutorial on the building blocks of, well, arguments. While you will only be committing arguments to paper at a later stage, thinking about what you would like to write is very important in this phase. To start this phase, you must first review your codes. Through this review, if you notice that there isn't enough differentiation between codes, you can combine them into a new code, else you can just stick to the codes you already have. Second, group your codes together into themes. Think of themes as a category that describes a group of closely related codes. For example, your studies on wildlife, so codes lion and cheetah, is categorized into a theme called big cats and code plains and grasslands is assigned to theme ecosystem. Themes do not have to be of the same type or level. It can be about processes such as the ecosystems example or like for like things such as the big cats example. You can group these any which way you want. It is your data and you are grouping it in a way that makes sense to you. A theme only has significance in the context of the research question. So, this process is not just about categorizing, as in it is not just about wilting down 100 codes into 20 themes. It is applying interpretive analysis to determine what is important. You are essentially conceptualizing your data into ideas that you can use to create arguments in support of your eventual findings so that you can answer your research questions. In this example, upon review, maybe 25 of those 100 codes you originally had are now unimportant, therefore they should be excluded. Just to reiterate, all themes must represent concepts that will answer your research questions. Sticking to our example, those 25 codes that do not fit the natural theme you came up with can be dropped completely or they can be assigned to a different theme called miscellaneous. My suggestion is to do the latter so that later in the process when you are even more familiar with your data set and you can see an outline of a story you would like to tell the reader, you may want to come back to these codes and see if any of them will add any value to your story. From experience, about 95% of these codes will be dropped, but if you are increasing your knowledge base with existing theory, consulting this bag of miscellaneous codes at a later stage could produce a few gems. What you are seeing on screen now is typically the process you would follow if you are doing an inductive study. As a reminder, the inductive researcher is trying to create theory from data. Therefore, the act of grouping codes into themes is a very natural and creative act. In a deductive study, it's a little bit more constricted, but I'll get to that later in this tutorial. A very important note is that you need to be open to perceiving these themes and also be unbiased. It is very tempting to find the data that you would like to see, but that is not what research is about, so check yourself every so often. While this method of grouping codes into themes is shown as a linear process, in practice it is more of an iterative act, so just be wary of that. There are many practical ways you can add codes to a theme. If you decided to use Excel, you can add a column labeled theme and go to town. If you decided to use a tool specifically designed for qualitative data analysis such as NVivo, you can use whatever functionality they have. Usually the mind map functionality is very, very useful. You can use sticky notes. It is not my favorite, but if it works for you, hey, go for it. The point is, the selection of tools that can help you with this is varied, so find something that works for you. Before this particular phase of thematic analysis is complete, you need to review the verbatim text that was originally assigned to the code to ensure accurate linking of codes to themes. You will be surprised how often you find a better home for text upon review. Let's talk deductive. 
You can follow the same steps that are in screen if you are doing a deductive study with one small difference. As a reminder, the deductive researcher aims to confirm theory through testing hypothesis and usually works with a framework. Instead of freely and creatively coming up with themes like you would if you are doing an inductive study, you will use the theory that is summarized in your framework and subsequently your codebook to guide the themes you come up with. If you have missed the previous tutorial and you want to learn more about codebooks, please follow the link above. Back to the deductive thematic analysis. Here is an example. Your study is on Starbucks' strategy. And as part of existing literature, you know that concepts such as competitive advantage and threats are staples in relation to the idea of a strategy. Just a quick sidebar, I just want to point out that the themes you are creating here does not have to be the exact same names as the constructs in your codebook. For instance, if this is your codebook, the label here does not have to equal the names of your themes. Coming back to our Starbucks example. Let's say you had three codes, customer service, product development, and store proximity. The code customer service, as in how Starbucks make customers feel at home and special, can find a natural home in the theme competitive advantage. The code product development, as in how they develop super hits such as a caramel macchiato pumpkin spice latte, is also a natural fit for a competitive advantage. I don't know if those are real words. I, I don't drink coffee and I've, I've never been to a Starbucks, so please excuse the ignorance. Anyway, coming back to our example, because of your existing literature, you will easily be able to link a code such as store proximity to a theme called threats. As in Starbucks are expanding so rapidly that stores in close proximity are fighting for the same customers. If you find codes that do not fit into the general concepts that you are expecting based on existing literature, but they still relate to your research question, you can be creative and create a different set of themes for them. For instance, here, employee skills development can be linked to a creative theme called role fluidity, even if role fluidity does not show up in existing and established strategic literature. So, Continuing our example of the last tutorial, if you are doing a deductive study, you will now have a code, theme that you just created, and a codebook code. At this point, you can think of your codebook code as a main theme and have the newly identified themes as sub-themes. For both a deductive and inductive thematic analysis, there is still quite a bit of work to do to refine the themes that you just created. As mentioned before, this is just the beginning of the interpretive analysis phases. In the next two phases, we will be focusing on how to morph and rearrange your themes in such a way that you can tell a coherent story. And that's it for me today. If you have any comments or questions, just pop them into the comment section. I do reply to every single one of them. Word. Like this, share this, subscribe to this. This is Dr. J, signing off.